Hello and welcome to the sixth Nagri reruns after a short one week break. I'm Tahir from Charles Kriya Foundation. With me, I've got my colleague Akvit. And uh, on this presentation, we have the very young, very dynamic team that made Mayavi Sopna Mahal, Atharva Salaskar, Vaibhav Kadam, and Aditya Desai, and their mentor, Abhijit Mukul Kishore. Uh, we, we really are looking forward to screening and discussing this film because they were the youngest participants last year. They're still in architecture school, but they did make a rather interesting film, which won the People's Choice Award. So without much further ado, let's screen the film.
thanks it's really quite a wonderful film uh so before we actually get down to question and answers i would like to ask avijit mukul kishore to speak a little bit about what it was like working with this team and uh, how did the film kind of evolve and then if there were if you have any views on nagri as a whole pro film making process please do not hesitate to share and then if you all uh, uh, aditya atarvan vibha want to jump in also please do not hesitate yeah over thanks, to you ahead. yeah thanks a lot um great to see you all again vibha atarvan and uh, aditya so nagri was this lovely process last year and it's happening again this year um organized by uh, charles kore foundation where a set of short films on the theme of architecture housing this year like the food and various other concerns to do with the city and people um need to be addressed you know in the short film format last year the cap on the duration was 5 years uh, five, five minutes of the short films which got extended to about 7 uh, minutes in some cases this year it's about 7 minutes or so and it's a platform where a lot of uh, young filmmakers uh, architects academics filmmakers and uh, it's open you know to anybody who can apply form a team get different people from different streams together people who have some kind of an expertise either in terms of uh, filmmaking or the subject you could be an architecture student or an art student or an academic you know and uh, make these films so this film maya vi swapna mahal is what won the audience award last year and i was very happy to have been you know associated with this congratulations again uh, athar and uh, vaibhav and aditya and it was very special for me you know especially working with uh, this team because none of them had any prior film making experience there wasn't a trained filmmaker or a film student on this team and much credit to all of them you know for the energy of not only you know knowing the subject but wanting to do it in this rap song format you know where the poetry the the poetry is written by a poet that they'll tell you the name of you know uh, shortly uh, i'm sorry i'm you know forgetting the name of the poet which they decided to do in the form of a rap song completely composed recorded by them along with musicians they know their friends master it in the studio and then of course the star mr vaibhav of kadam you know performing it uh, aided by atharva and uh, aditya and of course atharva you know uh with no prior experience of film making you know to my knowledge uh insisting on doing things that were very very difficult which is doing this entire lip sync edit uh moving around different parts of the city and uh cutting it like a music video all by itself it is quite a feat if you have not been trained in doing this um yeah there was a lot of back and forth in the process uh the difficulty of doing this during the covid lockdown before any of us had been vaccinated the vaccine started several months later you know so the concern was please do not get infected guys you know uh shoot whatever you have to but be careful be safe and uh yeah so they did pretty well you know with all those restrictions and to cut it like a music video now the form of the music video itself is such that it's something that needs to have a repeat value so the film is pretty dense um in terms of you know its image in terms of the poetry the music and if you don't understand marathi then the subtitle now i understand spoken marathi but this is different you know so to be able to watch the image to be able to listen to the song and read the subtitle it means it's a good music video because it makes me want to watch it many times so um much credit really you know to the entire team and uh, it is it stands out you know from the other films for the fact that it is a video you know it it's a it's a it's a song and a music video uh in the entire range of films which have many different uh, um tonalities many different registers 
of dealing with the subject of urbanity, of dealing with architecture, of housing, homes, livelihood, quality of living, and uh, migration, and so many things you know that uh, the entire range of films uh, included. So yeah, um, congratulations, really, you know, for your uh, energy in making it the way you chose to make it. Over to you guys. Uh, Atharva or Weber, do you want to add on anything about the process or? Yes, so like it was for us a great platform to start with our filmmaking career, we can say that. But um, I think the way Avijit sir guided us, like he was really open to all of the ideas which we proposed and he was okay with whatever we had with this limitations. And um, he actually gave us the freedom to go with it could be a rap song, it could be a monologue, it can be anything we wish. But he was not restricting us to any one particular thing. So we kind of went into an exploration and um, represented the way it is now. And I think we as a team, we three actually had a very good con uh, conversations along with uh, Sir and we actually opened up and we at each discussion, we actually um, know that we could do this, we could do that. And then doing the reshoots, going again back to the site and re uh, reshooting with a different perspective. And those were the things actually which helped a lot. And I think the topic was also very a generalized one, um, not focusing on any one particular issue. So I think that was giving us some broader sense. And so that's why we were not limited and the rap song actually gave us the flight. So I think Atharva can add on that. Yeah, so how uh, we started thinking about it from our personal experience, we had faced this problem of uh, like the de uh, developers delaying the process of uh, like building up projects and how housing, like how it affects us. So that is how the thing uh, process started. But then we were guided by Avijit sir and how to present that uh, to the people because it is really difficult to understand a problem if you have not really experienced it. So, and this uh, Nagri was a very great platform for us to uh, like to even uh, uh, like uh, I am like really grateful to them that they gave us this opportunity that we are not like proper filmmakers and just giving us a chance to explore this field. as an architecture student or I mean, now a filmmaker of some sorts, how do you look at the issues uh, that are caused due to these uh, housing schemes in Mumbai? So uh, we had been to all the like uh, to various uh, like type uh, while shooting the process, uh, shooting the film, we went to different types of uh, so, uh, housing societies uh, wherever it was possible for us. The main problem which we uh, found out was that uh, there like uh, this uh, migration is the main cause of like why we are starting to build uh, come up with this project the migration and we want to develop the slums we don't really want them but then again the developers try to like you know uh, they try to find there are there are like as we are going through our academics there are uh, rules and regulations which need to be followed which are like for uh, which are the minimum limitations of the, uh, everything but again as uh, then like uh, as we started exploring we found out that the uh, these developers and uh, developers and builders are trying to find out the loopholes in these schemes or this uh, rules and regulations which we have so for example i, I can give a few examples where they claim that the total like while selling a flat or while giving it out to someone uh, they claim it to be uh, to have a particular area but uh, but a part of that area is being used up in the uh, in the lobby spaces or in the like uh, uh, or or in the uh, or, uh, because of bad planning it is being uh, used up uh, in the like while building the internal walls and everything so that uh, that is one way where uh, people are like uh, pe uh, where uh, the loopholes are being used or 
like there are limitations to even the height of a building or height of a room but then in order to cramp up more rooms uh, the dev, uh, like the developers start to uh, like reduce the height of the room like these are something which are like two specific examples but again uh, as an architect or as a planner it's our moral duty to make sure that good planning uh, gets like gets executed that is like what i think should like happen uh, uh, like from a like as a uh, architect this, this is what i feel and adding to what athar was said so the quality of living has been compromised in all these schemes and so we are like many people are being shown a different picture altogether and uh, if there is a covid outbreak to show that this all thing which all went so the the correct picture which is shown now is that they are facing real, really big issues so here yeah, just uh, as athar is saying the specific issues so add, additional additions of balconies which are needed in a place like mumbai where people need their breathing space people want to be at their home and uh, use that comfortable space well but uh, in right in uh, front of my building we can see three buildings right next to each other there is no space for air ventilation nothing happening and it's not just about any one particular uh, sitco buildings sra buildings or it just each and every one trying to exploit and using all one square inch and not providing that comfortable living the quality of living which each individual wants and not segregating on the terms of um, income based so if you still have the lowest income you still needs to be provided with a better quality living which is a must and each and every one should understand that and mumbai is such place where it is being exploited much so that the issue which we found out could be addressed and from there we took off which kind of actually takes me to the next question that uh, how do you all think as young uh, as yet budding architects yet to get in the field but how do you all think that the planning of a city particularly a mega city like mumbai is going to is going to shape not only the lives of people who live in that city but have impacts on housing adequacy in that city that will one yeah why go ahead i'll uh yes so one of the things uh, which we kind of explored later on in our process which was uh, the town uh, the planning of the mumbai and the navi mumbai which is now happening navi mumbai is Uh, is a boom right now on planning, and there we are seeing that there is not just a single building being built; it is a whole uh, co- uh, complex. So there are five, six buildings coming together in a big site, and actually they are cutting off people from the uh, the living community, living space, and uh, which is there everywhere because everyone wants to interact with each other. So uh, the low rise uh, or the the chawls chawl system which uh, earlier used to be there and now it is also there but uh, all these things actually is not being now being catered, uh, catered and there is some another different kind of um, building typology which is being created so i think due to that many flats being remain unsold at higher um, um, higher levels so if there is like 15 uh, story building it generally get occupied but if you have 50 story 60 story building and people don't want to live in so there is no demand as such but still you want people to cram up in that space and just make space available for them but not being used as such so i think the housing policies which are now being uh, used actually they are looking at making everything high rise and uh, giving more fsi the fsi here is increasing we don't know after 2 years how much the fsi will go on then another stack of 5 4 floors will be built on any other building so i think such kind of thing actually is affecting the planning of the whole place making which is there in mumbai and we see many places which are just being cramped up there are just tall structures if you take a time lapse for past few couple of decades so 
we can see the building going up and up and there is the no road widening happening there is no adequate green spaces given no community spaces given and just a plot being exploited and given for people who are coming thanks thank you so actually i mean uh, while you said that uh, mentioned about the balconies or how a balcony should be there in every house per se but i think i mean apart from the balcony there are some basic parameters like uh the, what kind of an opening should be there to the floor to an opening ratio or the index or what you call it it's basically i mean aren't these parameters should be sort of worked out through policies like you mentioned so i mean do you think there has been a shift or do you have any observations when you like sort of i will i mean criticize about these issues in housing schemes in mumbai Yes, actually, uh, like the new UDCPR, which is being released of 2034, in that uh, many things have been changed, and there are good points and the negative points as such. Uh, the good point being the 15% increment in the premium instead of a TDR. So those kind of things are there, which actually helps. And the things which you were talking about, the floor uh, to opening ratio, all of that. So in that, actually, people tend to, as we say, find the loopholes. um the minimum height to be 2.75 or 2.45 such so people are now getting just used to that small spaces and when they visit somewhere outside mumbai so they see a different sill height or different level of volume and they feel luxury so here the term of luxury is different uh, outside it is different and people are getting used to it which is i think um, a wrong mindset for everyone so so these are the things actually we think should be looked upon um, and we as also architects and planners we also sometimes kind of instead of uh, in, just for making uh, meeting the requirements we tend to reduce the floor right and increase number of floors and maximize the things but we as an architect then we actually have that soft corner and uh, um, the understanding of the people and the living there so we actually morally don't do it so if everyone tries to accept it and give proper adequate living spaces so then actually the things start growing up and uh, become a quality living for everyone i think you raise an important point here about what it takes to be an ethically and morally conscious professional when you get out and practice and where do you draw the line which can take us to this question that uh, you know in order to cut costs in order to cut corners a lot of the so called sra housing schemes in bombay lack uh, what one would say adequate light ventilation and uh, how do you all think maybe that covid 19 has affected the health of people living in these properties i think adding to what tahir actually just said i mean there has been some data where it was said that tuberculosis also was spread at that rate so it just i mean builds up and adds into the idea of to how space doesn't really correspond to what a basic requirement for a housing scheme is so like we mentioned earlier how uh, like the, these spaces are being cramped up just to accommodate people we went to one of these space uh, like uh, one of the colonies in manpur and we saw that happening like that people are not trying to uh, uh, that it uh, the buildings are very much like closely spaced or there are no community spaces and actually covid covid has help, like helped us realize how how important this community spaces or having uh, spaces where people can come together and have interaction is important even within a community uh so like uh, for example if we take sra and we try to compare it with sidco developed societies there are the, like there are spaces each like each society has individual spaces they they are being designed in such a way that people can actually interact with each other so that is one thing which was very much important like open spaces and community spaces and once that comes in picture if like if something is being shown up front then we people will try to maintain it and try to keep it clean and the, uh, that is how like you develop like 
you go on uh, uh, like uh, go on increasing one one step of the process at uh, like what at certain point so like how light and ventilation comes uh, along with that like if you design a sp space where people have like uh, this might be a very much far fetched idea but like if uh, if we design spaces where people are made to keep the space clean because everyone is going to look at it then uh, we we might reach to a point where even the sra or even the we uh, the, uh, like these things like space uh, community spaces or proper light ventilation would become a uh, become a uh, become a quality standard and then uh, like become a, a standard thing and everyone is required to do that um just to add up add up on that uh, actually we were uh, like he was mentioning about the uh, the standards which need to be set because people then type uh, we have seen in um, many of the places while exploring that they are extending their uh, building line they are trying to take the balconies inside the room and then accommodate the space so the two buildings like come close to each other and due to that um, the in between space which needed to be there is being taken up within the building and I think that's the one issue and people, the buildings are just placed in serial manner right in front. If you stand, we can see 10 to 15 buildings right in a row. So these are the few issues we saw and we can clearly demarcate the difference between the CITCO building, CITCO planning buildings or the SRA building. Okay. Let's, let's move on to the uh, film's visual treatment because we thought that was an interesting choice. What 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 encouraged you all to select this medium of using rap and making it as a music video to to kind of present the realities that you all wanted to talk about? Um, so starting with we were actually open to all sort of uh, way of expressing our idea, and we were thinking of a monologue sort of a thing, but. Then um, after the poet Bhagavan Painter, which is in uh, close relation with Atharva Saraskar and Aditya Desai, so we got to read about uh, read that poem, and it, uh, actually it was from his personal experience, and it was heartfelt. And we, uh, as a new generation, read it as a rap, and with adding on some beats, and kind of try to target the newer generation audience. So they actually. Uh, making them aware because others are aware but no one is like actually speaking it up so we want to build that connect with that our target audience and um, in Maharashtra we have seen like there is bhajan kirtan happening music is an art form where each and every individual expresses their own opinion about rather it should be a political about love or anything any issues so expression through music is one of the great uh, things and we tried to get that opportunity by converting that poem into a rap and then uh, on our own knowledge and research we kind of produce a whole song out of it and uh, yes so it was a quite an experience um, to deal with all layers of the rapping um, we actually uh, shot uh, like each and every uh, lip syncing part of that rap was being reshorted because each and every point we were actually getting a different uh, shot because uh, if something is happening in the background each and every time if we shoot uh, the other day we, uh, when we come there is something else happening so we were getting stories on the daily basis of a shoot and then we are um, like playing with that whole scenario and using that form of expression in a better manner Nandita Kurya Merotra says an observation here that it's very interesting how rap, when it's delivered in this form of sort of almost a, a barking attack, and your rap is focused on the developers who, and you're rapping at them from the street. And when you look at the designs that these developers have done, they are kind of putting their back to the street. And when they design these gated communities. So I just thought I would put that in here. 
and we have seen that it's not just about rap but many things were also being uh, in like uh, villages as well there is ratri sa bhajan kirtan so in in the temples people sit and uh, they sing uh, they tell the stories about shivaji maharaj um, other things Pand- pandurang tukaram and all sort of things and these were uh, these are being converted uh, conveyed today as well and i think rap is one such good medium to connect and then adding uh, the literature and uh, the language marathi language to it actually that was also we actually usually listen all the rap song in uh, hindi so trying it in marathi so getting references from bhadipa and getting inspired from them so that was one good thing and we recently were um, we recently got encountered to opari uh, music which is from south india and the uh, song enjoy enjami which is there so actually they kind of also looked song as opari song the art form and conveyed their whole message so i think we even, got it in the market yeah, even we tried to do that because like whenever we asked anyone what their opinion about rap was it was how like youngsters are just trying to like portray something or just went out something or in a aggressive way but we got like really inspired from all the bharwood or bhajan and everything and we tried to use it to like we can still use it to educate people and our target audience was very much focused on the younger generation who are going to get it uh, going to face these problems what did the poet think about the rap and the video yeah he actually really liked that he wrote it as a poem but then he uh, like even he liked the idea of uh, portraying it as a rap song to like to meet uh, like so that it meets larger audience no it's very effective and uh, i didn't know that you guys had uh, bhadipa as a reference you know because it's quite incredible this uh, youtube platform called mm-hmm. bhadipa which is bharatiya digital party but the marathi channel which has just i think uh, completed 1 million uh, hits and such you know so it's doing really well with some great content and a great commentary on uh, contemporary lives um, you know done in the marathi language using a lot of folk forms and a lot of humor which is what really makes it very effective you know so it makes me wish i understood marathi better than i do you know to be able to really follow the nuance of that and uh, yeah nice to know that and what about translation like how how did you all kind of because one of the problems that we very often have when especially as technical people speaking in a in in a mother tongue language is when we want to explain complex issues we very often struggle to find words we jump back to english uh so and and then your subtitles also are quite nicely done because they flowed along with the rapid delivery of viber so maybe if you could tell us a little bit about how that cut was made and so actually we had one of our professors a uh, uh, professor mustan sir dalvi and he is actually a really big um, we can say as a poet and he has been in the art deco foundation um, of art deco mumbai and he is one of the member and he also uh, writes poe- poems and he uh, if you if you uh, visit his instagram page you can see how uh, good he is and being one of our professors for all the five years um, so when we approached him by uh, showing our lyrics and he was actually uh, really excited and he wanted to help and uh, we had one translation done by one of our friends and after that we proposed to him and then um it was very helpful and he directly um, sent us and uh, within a day or two he was able to translate it as he knows marathi he has the hold of literature so he actually uh, did it quite nicely and i think avijit sir would have also yeah, and actually him. avijit sir suggested us to approach him Like yeah, I mean, that in mind. no, no, because I mean, Basant Sir Dalvi is uh, not only an architect but a teacher at Sir J J School, 
and uh, an english poet you know who writes and publish publishes poetry in english besides that very very um, vibrant alive and he got a great sense of humor um and majorly into popular music and film music so he would know the idiom you know so i thought you know it would be good to approach him and he luckily agreed and of course he knew uh vaipa and uh, atharva personally it was very very you know it really worked um for the video you know uh, that is uh, subtitles translations as subtitles so uh, i i think did we trim it a little further because uh, subtitles have to you know there's a limitation of how long you can hold them on screen so now i don't remember whether it was trimmed further or these were dalvi's uh, translations no sir so, we took dalvi's translation okay yeah. mukul i actually want to know this from you as to why making a documentary film versus making something like a rap music video there is a delivery of content or a story outline the pace differs probably the script has to be 2x or 3x longer for a rap music video right so i mean how does it how does it work with a documentary film which is probably takes a time and takes uh, takes like a specific time to sort of illustrate a character and then develop the context but it's sort of different when it comes to a rap music video when the city is as rapid as shown in the music video so how does it work for a mentor or as a filmmaker when we are sort of talking or you are while mentoring two different forms of films in the same short film competition yeah i mean uh, i mean if you look at all the other films uh, in nagari you know last year it was quite a range of films and this one of course was uh, the one that was uh, distinct in the you know in the fact that it was a rap music video and in marathi you know set in mumbai uh so one approaches it accordingly like you're right if it was documentary or if it was character driven you know one would approach it differently or you know the other film that i mentored was uh, city within a city on juhapura in uh, ahmedabad you know um so the approach there would be because it had a set of primary characters you'd look at it very differently whereas here it was driven by the music it was driven by the lyrics it was driven by uh, vaipav's performance and atharva's photography and editing and um, so it had to be you know it really had to follow this collage kind of uh, approach where uh, you get things which at places are illustrating the text but at most places they're doing their own thing and forming their own narrative you know so there's an interplay that's happening between uh, the voice text and image there's an interplay and interplay that's happening so you treat it as such you really treat it as such and uh, interestingly and beautifully you know mumbai is a city that lends itself to being photographed again and again differently you know and there's something new that it adds each time there's something where even if you're recycling older images you can look at them and you it's got that kind of vibrancy and that kind of character and that kind of visual um uh, energy you know which added to the music and uh, the performance you know and quite a passionate performance by vibha you know completely loved that i'm sure you know it shows he was completely with it you know and it evolved so um i mean i pretty much left them to do it you know and uh, i was like yeah just go and do it and you know it's uh, uh, you need to get these images so my interventions were fairly minimal you know i would just keep uh, making possibilities um, mentioning possibilities and you know uh, so on uh, but it was pretty much their concept and uh, something that they all uh, put together among the three of them so also you know being a filmmaker and being a teacher you have to look at different kinds of projects in different kinds of languages and genres and concerns and so on you know pretty much like all of you architects you know you do different kinds of projects and and, and so on so um and one also enjoys doing that you know doing a whole variety of things because if you approach everything with the same kind of uh, language you might get quite monotonous so i i which is why i also think that this particular video you know 
brings a kind of different tone to the entire uh, Nagari project of last year, 2020. Thank you. Mukha. Thanks. Thanks. I think that's a good tone to yeah. also end today's rerun on. Thanks, Aditya, Tarva, Vaibhav, for your time. Thanks, of course. Mukha. Thank you so much for joining Thank in. So and it was good to speak to you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you guys. All the best. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.